Hey guys, um, haven't done a live video in a while, so I thought I'd do one tonight. Um, had a little bit of extra time, been super slammed both at the shop and uh, with my other job and just random stuff going on. I hope you all can hear me. Um, as soon as somebody pops in, can you guys just say, yeah, I can hear you? Um, that way I can adjust things. Uh, I'm running a little bit differently than my normal setup for the live videos. Um, man. It's been a while, and it's been a crazy, crazy time, um, both at the store, at conventions, just everything. Um, we've got a lot of games. <laughs> we have gotten a lot of games recently. Um, the first thing that happened was we ended up buying a storage unit from somebody who tried owning a game store and didn't quite make it. Um, we got a crazy amount of cables and controllers and batteries and accessories and just insane stuff from them. And then the very next day, um, I bought out another large, large quantity of games from someone that I've been buying games from for a while. And um, it was like just the store was chaos. If you came in during that time, you probably saw it. Really, you guys dig through boxes and whatnot. Um, found some super cool stuff, everything from Turbo Graphics to Jaguar CD to 3DO stuff to Nintendo. I mean, you name it, it was in there. Um, we were still going through boxes, so thank you all for bearing with us through that. Um, we're still getting there, and a lot of you have picked up some cool stuff out of that, which is neat. Um, always glad to get you guys the games you're looking for, especially when it's obscure, weird stuff, because um, we all like something different especially in our collector community um the past two trade nights have been awesome to say the least uh lots of people showed up lots of great trades lots of really cool stuff came out everybody's really stepping their game up um our buddy austin brought out a big box earthbound last time that was really cool um saw some pc engine games just all kinds of craziness um, has been at trade night. And then our conventions have been nuts. It was fun doing those. Uh, we did MomoCon recently with Devin and our friend Dave and Devin's girlfriend Sarah. Uh, it's always great seeing them in Atlanta. We do MomoCon. We've done that within the past two years and hopefully we can keep doing it. Um, and maybe we'll even get them up here for a convention soon. They come into town for Pensacon, but uh, maybe they'll come up for ECC. Speaking of Emerald Coast Con, um, <laughs> Emerald Coast Con is now my project. Um, basically, we are putting on the convention along with the help of my friends. Um, my friend Sarah is helping me out a whole lot with logistics since she knows conventions better than I do. Um, we are having it at the Ramada on Okaloosa Island November 18th and 19th. And it is going to be an all-facet con. Like We're going to have all kinds of stuff from anime to cosplay to games to game development all kinds of things and we're working on that now uh, we're still locking down guests we've got some good ones lined up um, we've got a developer from Chucklefish Games if you guys are familiar with Starbound um, they also published Stardew Valley I believe um, all kinds of cool stuff from them uh, we are working on getting Joe Granado and the 8-Bit Heroes back hopefully they'll come up and join us Joe I know you want to take a vacation to the beach even though you live in Florida um, we got some cool cosplayers coming up. Uh, let's see who else. We've got a YouTube guy who happens to live locally that may come on board. Um, he does these crazy puppet shows. His name is Super Mario Tyler, I believe. Um, if you haven't checked out his channel, check that out. But once again, we are benefiting the Ark of the Emerald Coast. They do some great work around here and, uh, all the money that we make is going to them because they're a great organization and we want to help them out. They help out the community. And if you've ever been into Rad Junk and ever talked to me and Sam or any of the guys that hang out, out up there at trade night, it's all about the community and it always has been. And that's what we're really gearing towards. Just get everybody out there to have a good time and uh, see some good panels and whatnot. And I think everybody's going to have a blast. So that's going to be November 18th and 19th on Okaloosa Island at the Ramada Inn. We do have block rates for rooms. I believe they're going to be 60 or 70 bucks and um, per night. And that way you can stay on site. You can enjoy the retro console room along with the arcade. Um, that's going to be running a little bit later. We've got tournaments going on. 
Uh, like I said, panels, the vendor floor is going to be really killer this year. We've got a good mix already signed up, but we're also looking for more vendors, more guests, and more panelists. So if you're local and you want to put on a panel, get in contact with me. That way we can kind of work you in. Maybe some people don't know what you do and you want everybody to be involved or you just want to like show off some skill or talk about a subject that you're super knowledgeable on. Just let us know. We'll work you into the panel schedule and it will be a good time. So we're trying to focus more on the community this year and things that are kind of in the same area that we are because the people that are here, you'd be surprised who comes out of the woodwork and has amazing skills. We've got people in the area that do everything from like their own video games to writing books to voice actors to incredible cosplayers and we want to focus on that core group. Everybody that's in Florida or surrounding areas like Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana. If you've got if you want to be a guest or you want to be a panelist, let me know. And we will figure something out and we will get you on there so people know what you do. Um, but that's Emerald Coast Con. Like I said, we're still pulling it all together. We didn't think it was gonna happen this year, so it's time. Let's make this thing happen and bring it back to the community like it was supposed to be and just have fun. Um, so yeah, that's ECC. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm all in, 100%. So let's do it. Um, let's see, games. Let's talk about some games. Uh, we sold Web of Fire at the store. Um, somebody came in and purchased the rarest Sega game of all time, essentially, which is awesome. Um, hey Nick, since you're, I see that you're watching, can you hear me okay? Just want to make sure the audio is working. Like I said, I'm running a little bit different setup than normal. If somebody could just give me like a thumbs up, good to go. Um, I'm going to keep talking though, in case it is. Um, Game-wise, what did we pick up recently? What is something cool? Oh yeah, we sold on fire. Uh, our buddy Robert got Steel Battalion. I'm sure you guys saw that in the post. All right, cool. Audio's working. I saw some thumbs up. Um, let's see. Oh, these are cool. I got a few of these in. These are E3 exclusive briefcases that were given out at E3, obviously, uh, when they announced the Xbox 360. And if you haven't, I don't think I've posted any pictures of these. Um, it's a nice foam case cut out to hold a controller, media remote, headset, battery charger, plan charge kit, all kinds of stuff. Um, I've got a couple of these. I think I'm gonna do a project with this. Uh, you can see the Steam Link sitting in here that kind of alludes to what's going to happen with this one and I think it'll be pretty neat I'll uh you guys know how I am with projects I got a lot going on so it takes me a while I promise I'll try and get this one knocked out quickly um so it's not lame and just sitting around the shop kind of like the pie boy which I finally have working sort of uh, I need to solder a few more things but that's really cool game boy I'm sure you saw the video on the page uh it's got a LCD screen in it and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, let's see. Let's talk about some weird games. How about weird games that I haven't talked about? How about like, uh, I picked up, I think we actually had this one for sale in the shop for a little bit. And then I said, why is this at the shop? Because I want to play some import Saturn. Uh, Real Bout Special on the Saturn. I brought that one home for my collection. Kind of neat. Uh, here's a weird one that's not expensive that came in that big lot of games that we picked up. Uh, it's called Kung Fu Rider, and it's this weird, quirky thing where you ride different stuff. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, and it somehow utilizes the move controllers and the camera. <clears throat> it's just really weird. Like, look at that cover. The dude's riding like an office chair, going nuts on it. Um, I want to check that out, play that. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, another one I snagged is uh for my nes collection a lot of you guys uh know that i used to collect nes like hardcore before we started the shop um that's how i met dave and eric i was on my hunt for nes carts because i wanted a complete set and then i decided a while back that i was going to offload a lot of the stuff i had like my higher end stuff um and just kind of like i didn't care about owning it all at once now so now i'm just after like the quirky titles i didn't have so this one's one called flying warriors on NES by Culture Brain. I haven't played it yet or looked into it, 
But it is a culture brain game. They did uh, Kung Fu Heroes, which is a game I really like. I believe they did Kung Fu Heroes. I'm pretty sure they did. Um, someone will correct me if I'm wrong. I know you will. And this thing looks pretty cool. Um, it's kind of like a weird superhero thing. I don't know how it plays, but I'll find out soon. I finally brought an NES home. I don't know how I haven't had an NES in so long, but I have one now um, at the house. Uh, we've talked about that before. My game room is a massive disaster right now, and I would show it to you, but it's too embarrassing. Um, so I'm kind of like surrounded by stuff. Um, so I'm just reaching for random things. These are kind of cool that I got in uh, that giant lot of games. These are Star Wars Commodore 64 cassette games. And it looks like they're based on the arcade games. Uh, this Return of the Jedi game, I actually remember playing at a laundromat when I was a kid. And my mom would take us to do the laundry. And it was like a stand-up arcade. And it kind of had like this uh, box controller with two handles on it. And you steered like this, kind of like any steering wheel controller. And uh, you were on a speeder bike at first on indoor, and then you're flying like the Millennium Falcon. Pretty cool. I mean, check these out. Look how cool that case is. Like, it's nuts. It's like a cassette case, but a little bit different than the games in there, the manual. Really cool. And, uh, you know, it's A New Hope, Empire, and Return of the Jedi, which is also my favorite Star Wars movie is Return of the Jedi. Uh, let's see. What else did I get? Oh. Continuing on with Star Wars, um, I recently, I'm not huge into Master System. I'm really not, but there's some games that really intrigue me on it. It seems like a fun system. My buddy Nick that's watching right now, he recently picked one up from the shop. Uh, and we played a little bit of Alex Kidd while he was there. It's just a cool little console that's got some good games, especially games that weren't released in America. The PAL games and the Brazilian titles, they're really cool because they got some odd stuff way later on because the master system continued on past the genesis and whatnot in those countries um, especially brazil but another star wars game is this and uh i didn't know there was a star wars game on the master system which is really cool and this one actually looks like the nes one where the top down you have the top down map view and you're on tatooine in the land speeder and you go in like the different caves and stuff in your luke um it just looks really neat and it's a little bit different. Um, really fun on the Master System. I put a little bit of time into it. Uh, I've got a power base converter so I can start playing these some. Uh, along with this, I also got a, another set of the 3D glasses for Master System. If you guys have seen those, they're pretty cool. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, oh, here's a cool one. Big Street Fighter fan. So I've got Street Fighter Collection on Saturn. This one's a little hard to come by. Um, and I needed more Saturn games to play, so this one's going to go on my shelf for a little bit. Honestly, it'll probably go into the shop for trade or sale relatively soon, um, just because I have so much Street Fighter stuff. I don't know if I really want to hang on to this one. It's Saturn. I'm not a huge Saturn fan, but I want to kind of branch out, explore some more Sega stuff since I love Nintendo and NEC so much. Excuse me. Um, speaking of NEC, at trade night, my buddy, Mr. Pixley, brought me something very, very cool, um, that he's had for a little while, and he knows that I've wanted it, and we came to an agreement on it, and this one, super excited about it. Let's see if I can pull it over here without knocking anything over. So if you hear loud noises, just, uh, wait about five minutes and see if I'm okay. That was way easier than I thought. So, uh, Mr. Pixley, Sergeant Pixley, brought me a PC Engine CD-ROM system. And it is the full, um, there was a core system in there, along with the CD-ROM system too, and the IFU unit, uh, commonly referred to as the suitcase, because it has a handle and you can carry it like a suitcase, side by side. Um, for those that don't know, the PC Engine is the Japanese Turbo Graphics. And uh, it had a huge library in Japan, lasted a really long time, I want to say till like 99-ish with the PCFX, uh, lots of iterations, but to me this is the coolest thing ever because the CD drive in this is region free, 
but also, since it's the Japanese core unit, I can finally play all my Japanese CD games that require a uh, Japanese system card or arcade card. Because there are certain games that require a little bit more RAM or video memory, and that is actually stored on the Hue cards, like this, and then the CD-ROM drive utilizes it. So games like Sapphire or King of Fighters, um, a few more shooters that do, that need a little bit more power and oomph. And what they did is they made it modular with these cards, which is really cool. And um, I was playing it the other day, and I was playing some Spriggan 2, which is a shooter from Japan, kind of like uh, Maycross or Robotech-style stuff. This thing's a blast. And I already had the Turbo Duo, the American version, and now I've got the Japanese version. I need a Duo R now. That'll probably be my next one, um, just so I'll have the gray American version and then the white Japanese version of the Duo. But, Mr. Pixley, I appreciate this more than you'll ever know. Um, super cool to me, and now I've got this to add to my collection. This isn't going anywhere. I'm super stoked. Uh, speaking of turbo stuff, if I can find the box for it, I got a game recently. I'll just get the Hue card real quick. Um, I posted about it on my personal Facebook page. I brought it home from that huge haul that we got uh, from a friend of mine. And this game is incredible. This is Soldier Blade. And this thing is a shooter in the Star Soldier series. It is incredibly fun, incredibly addictive. Um, if you haven't seen this game before, look it up. A lot of people say that Sapphire, me included, is like the best PC Engine game or like Lords of Thunder or Gates of Thunder, Gate of Thunder. This game blows those out of the water. And the music in it is killer. The gameplay is fun. It's not like super fast bullet hell. And it's not um, it's not too easy. Like uh, Blazing Lasers. That a lot of people know on the Turbo. It's like that perfect pacing. And super fun game. If you don't have it. Check it out on like an EverDrive. Or whatever means you feel you need to. Uh, if you're into shooters check out Soldier Blade. That game is, it's sick. Uh, let's see, what else have I gotten recently? I brought this home today because my buddy Todd was telling me about it. I did not realize, even though the cover is very indicative of this, that this was a shmup. I thought this game was going to be some like crappy platformer. I don't really know how to say this. Uh, Solfis? Solfis? Sure. Why not? Um, he showed me some YouTube videos of this. Killer soundtrack. Once again, like, I don't have a lot of Sega CD games and I'm trying to branch out. This one looked really cool um, because recently, if I can pull it out of the bag, um, I got this sweet carrying case that I put together. I got my CDX working. So this thing, I brought it home. I'm ready to play some Sega CD games. All you Sega guys that have been telling me for a long time that I need to jump on the bandwagon this is my entry point um you finally won't give me crap anymore about not being into sega games or whatever but i'll check it out we'll see what it's what's going on um Sulfies looks like a cool one though uh let's see i've got like boxes and boxes of stuff also bear in mind all the stuff that i bring home i'm probably not going to keep it for a while sam will probably murder me if i do so it will end up at the shop at some point so if you like what I'm talking about, don't worry. Put it on your gamer list, and uh, it'll probably get to you at some point. Um, here's a cool one that I picked up. Uh, my buddy Nick, again, we were talking about uh, CIB NES games because he's into NES as well. And he said the only NES box that he would ever want would be Bart versus the Space Mutants. And um, I picked it up at Trade Night CIB from our buddy Tyler. And uh, I don't know what happened to the box. Nick, where'd the box go? Oh, it may be at Rad Junk. Hmm. I bet that if you went down to Rad Junk, there might be something waiting for you, Nick. Um, I needed the game. You needed the box. So we're going to make that happen. That's how it goes. Uh, <laughs> that's why I like getting stuff for you guys. Uh, it makes me happy, too, when you pick up something you want. Oh, here's a random stack of stuff. Oh, this is all trade night stuff. 
the, oh, this is something cool. Speaking of the PC Engine, um, I picked this up. They did a final run on it. The artwork looks super, super, like, derpy. I can't think of a better word. Um, but this is like a... It looks like an RPG, like Zelda. This is a new PC Engine game that a developer put out. Um, they are called... If I can find it on here... Uh, Frozen Utopia. And this is called Mysterious Song. Um, like I said, this is a new PC Engine game. I believe this was made in like 2012, so it's new-ish. Uh, last five years. Um, I picked this up pretty cheap. They had it on sale uh, for the final run, so I'm going to check it out. Could be kind of cool. We'll find out. Um, let's see. Picked up a copy of Yo Noid. Nothing crazy, but I needed it for my little collection that I've got going on again. Um... These are some games from Sergeant Pixley, Ron Mahaff. We got an F1 game. You guys know I like racing games, so that'll be cool. Ron Mahaff looks like a fighter. I think it's similar to the Super Famicom version. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, our buddy Jerry at Trade Night has been hounding me about this game and how I haven't played it since we've opened the store. It's a Super Nintendo game. It's an action platformer called Plock. Apparently this has a killer soundtrack and good gameplay because Jerry considers it one of the best games of all time. Jerry, we're going to put that to the test. Um, we might be playing this on a live stream soon that Todd, Dylan, and myself are going to do. We're going to do like 24 hours of gaming and we're going to tie that into ECC. Um, yeah, we'll put Plock in. We'll see what happens. Denise, you know what this is? You know what Plock is? Because I, it looks crazy. So I can't wait to play that. Um, I like action platformers, so that'll be fun. Also, something has come back into the possession of me. Uh, we call Bill Williams rules on this, if anybody knows, which means it stays within my circle of friends. Uh, this is my Diehox Edition Game Boy Color that I picked up at the very first Emerald Coast Con. And... Um, I ended up selling this or trading it to our friend Tony. He works at the shop sometimes. And he decided, or maybe I convinced him, to get it back to me. And finally it's back because I am also on the hunt for a Diehawks N64. If anybody has one, I would like one. I'm, it's kind of tough to find. I like orange and black together. They're kind of cool. It's like Halloween weirdness. Um, let's see. There's like piles and piles of stuff. Oh, this is a cool one I picked up from my buddy at Trade Night. He's always bringing me some neat stuff. Uh, this is called King of Dragons on SNES. This is a Capcom beat em up, uh, much in the vein of King Arthur, not King Arthur, Knights of the Round, if you're familiar with that one. Uh, you're basically, you pick your class. And you walk through these levels and you beat up dragons and different monsters and whatnot. This game's super fun and I had not heard of it until trade night and I'm glad I picked it up. I put about uh, half an hour to an hour into it and it's really good. Aaron, I have not played Brutal Paws yet. That is actually downstairs uh, with some other stuff. I am super excited about that game. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Aaron brought us in some games for trade the other day and... Sam stuck one under the counter for me and it was like a complete in box Super Nintendo game called like Brutal Pause or like Pause of Fury and you're like it's like Mortal Kombat meets animals super weird but it looks like a whole lot of fun and um I don't know why I had to have it so I'm going to be playing that pretty soon maybe we'll throw that into the stream too um uh, let's see what else do we have this is kind of cool um, so, Game Boy is a big thing for me, especially CIB Game Boy stuff that I think is weird. Um, I found out that there was a game that's kind of uncommon called Deja Vu 1 and 2, just like Deja Vu on the NES, for the Game Boy Color. And it comes in a combo cart, and it really intrigued me. It looked like a neat, like, story-driven game, much like Deja Vu. And, uh, I ordered this one online, and... I don't know if I want to say luckily or unluckily, but instead of it being cart only like I wanted it to be, 
it came in sealed. Um, which is cool, because the game's a little on the pricey side, but I wanted to play the game. So if anybody has a cart-only copy of this, can I borrow it? Like, I promise I'll give it back. I just want to play the game, because uh, my is sealed, and I don't have the heart to rip it open. But yeah, so that happened. Um, let's see. How about a GameStop pickup? You guys want to see something random I got from GameStop? This is this kind of blew my mind when I pulled it out. Uh, ordered a couple N64 controllers from GameStop because they were running a deal. And I pulled out a bag and out came an orange 64 controller, a first party one, to match my orange N64, which is pretty neat. Um, it's got a really nice stick on it too. So I was pretty happy about that. Oh, uh, what else? What else? Um, oh god, I'm dropping stuff. Um, I brought home a copy of Ghost Recon. Me and one of my best childhood friends, we played the crap out of this game on PC. Uh, we, <laughs> I don't even want to admit to how many hours we put into that. So I thought that was cool. Um, let's see. Sam got this cool Steelbook uh, Kingdom Hearts collection thing. I don't really know. I don't like Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I said it. I don't like it. Um, oh, oh, this. Kind of forgot about it. Forgot an Atari Lynx in the bag. I can't remember if this is Model 1 or Model 2. I think it's Model 1. I don't know a whole lot about Lynx. Um, yeah, it's kind of neat. Uh, the screen has a couple little issues. It doesn't look like a cap issue. It looks like an actual LCD issue, which I'm going to try and fix. Um, there were some cool games in here. There was like a Batman game. I think it was Batman Forever. Um, one game called Electro Cop, which is like a beat em up. And another game called Blue Lightning, which is kind of like Top Gun or Afterburner. Uh, also, along with the links, is a. I can't even get it out of the bag right now, but it's Tiger Gamecom. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the Gamecom, let's see if I can get it out of here. So this thing came out like, um, I want to say mid to late 90s, probably late 90s. Uh, this was made by Tiger. Uh, it has a touch screen. It's got a built-in like PDA, like digital assistant thing, like Palm Pilot. It's got a stylus. Um, I bought one of these around the time it came out because I thought it was really cool because it had like, two cartridge slots so you could play two games. And uh, the other thing I thought that was really neat about this is at some point, they released a um, a modem for it, so you could actually take this online. Now, the web browsing on it, you can see the COM port there, which you plug the modem into, and then you plug your phone line into. It was a dial-up modem. Uh, the thing about it was, it was text-based. So you can only use text-based browsers, much similar to Lynx, if you guys are familiar with that. Uh, it's a text-based Linux browser. And... Uh, there were some cool games on this. I mean, they weren't the greatest games, but they were Sega titles. Like, uh, there was Virtual Fighter on here. Uh, there was a Jurassic Park game that I think was exclusive to Sega that they also ported over to here. Uh, there was a Resident Evil game. And uh, one of my favorite games on this was Duke Nukem 3D. It actually played decently well and had voice in it for a Duke Nukem game on a handheld at the time. Uh, the graphics are kind of like the original Game Boy for the most part. But it's just a neat, like, odd little system. Uh, more nostalgic for me than anything. Also, while I'm talking, if anybody has any questions in general about gaming, or just games, or just wants to talk, shoot a question in there. I can see your comments. I'll try and respond as fast as possible. I don't know what the latency is here on the internet connection. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, shoot them over. Um, I'm ready to answer some trying to think of some more stuff I can talk about right now. Some cool stuff. What else did I get? Um, I'm like looking at stacks of games over here that I want to go through, but it's going to be nuts if I try and pull them out. Um, oh, I've also accumulated a ton of Nintendo powers recently. Um, that might be another hoarding obsession that I go through. I think I'm up to about 75 or 85 issues. Um, that's not including doubles, and, uh, 
I don't know. It's fun, like, flipping through the old magazines and whatnot and just trying to, like, find old ads or reviews or tips and tricks from, you know, back in the day. Because I know I didn't get a whole lot of those magazines as a kid. But now that I'm an adult, I'm going to go relive my childhood. Nate, uh, ECC things. I kind of touched on them. Uh, we're still looking for some more guests. We've got some lined up now. We've got vendors pouring in, so if you're looking to be a vendor, send in your application. It's on the Emerald Coast Con page. Um, like I said earlier, location is locked down. We're Ramada Inn on Okusa Island, November 18th and 19th. Uh, we will have block rates on the rooms. I believe they are 60 or $70 per night, which is really cheap. It's right on the beach. Um, you'll be able to stay there for the convention, and we'll probably do some like little after-party things and whatnot. Uh, retro console room is going to be back in full force along with the arcade. We've got a panel room that's good to go. We've got a huge like tournament room that we're trying to like plan on what we want to do. Uh, we're looking at running some more casual tournaments as well. So you don't have to be like a top tier Smash player to play. Um, there will be prizes and cash prizes. Nice pot to go after. Um, vendor hall is going to, just based on the vendor applications we've gotten recently, I think it's going to be a really cool, diverse vendor room, so you're going to be able to find a lot of cool stuff you don't normally see here. Um, we're going to have like a little video ga history of video game walkthrough, which should be neat with some really, really cool, rare stuff um, that I think you guys are going to like a lot that even I'm impressed with this year. Uh, what else? Panels, of course. Um, we've got some good panels. We're going to have panels on how to get started on YouTube, panels on how to do a Twitch stream with your console or different consoles that you may have. Um, I know that Todd and I, and if we get, can get Dave up here, we're going to do another panel like we did last year just on general video game stuff, specifically retro games. Uh, we may have a few other panels that we're going to be doing throughout the weekend, just kind of showing off, maybe touching on like histories of shooters or old computers like the 8-bit Atari computers and Commodores, things like that. Um, what else? What do you guys want to see at Emerald Coast Con? What's something that's like kind of local that you want to bring in and you want to hear them talk about something or like a voice actor or somebody who's local that does YouTube? They don't have to be like in California or whatever. We've got a community here that's insane and is like multifaceted with great talent. So... Let's expound upon that. Um, so if you have any suggestions, or if you even want to do a panel or be a guest, just contact me. Either shoot me a message on my personal Facebook page, um, maybe an email to joe at joealonzo.com, or uh, info at radjunk.com, or just go over to the ECC page, Emerald Coast Con, and send us a message. And we'll go through it. We'll be in touch with you. We'll try and figure something out. Because even if you want to talk for like 30 minutes, or if you want to ramble on like I do in these videos for an hour, then, you know, let us know. We'll figure something out. Because I want to see what you have to talk about or what you want to share with everybody. I know there's people in the community like GBA Austin. We call him GBA Austin because that dude knows everything about Game Boy Advance games. Um, there's the Dave who's going to help with the Twitch panel. And he's got a crazy, like, thing of hardware. Um, Pixley, I'm talking to Kevin Hanley. Um... Hopefully we can get him back. I really want to because I think he does some really cool stuff and uh, makes some awesome things. Uh, he may even come out to trade night soon. So we'll figure that out. Oh, trade night. Ooh, I forgot about this. The next trade night, which will be the first Saturday of August, is our one-year anniversary at Rad Junk. Um, it will be the one-year anniversary of Dave passing the torch to us to do trade night at Rad Junk. The only place where you can come and like set up and sell your own games to other people. Um, we give you your own little like storefront essentially. So if you want to come to Trade Night and help us celebrate our first year, it's going to be awesome. Um, let's see. I'm going to scroll through these real quick. Nate, that sounds good. Shoot me some ideas. Uh, Samuel, we can definitely do that. Um, we've got a lot of people that are into fighters. Uh, I know two dudes that know more about fighting games than probably anybody on the planet. And uh, I think they could give us a good rundown if I can get them to do a panel or something like that. Uh, we could even do like a – we could do a tournament tied into an informative thing where we run through a bunch of fighters. 
Let's see what else. Steve, there is definitely going to be cosplay. Um, my friend Sarah that's helped me out with the whole thing, she is huge in the cosplay com community. I don't know if you've heard of Blue Knight cosplay. Um, she is going to be helping out with everything, and cosplay is going to be a big focus. So there will be cosplay. We invite you to do your own cosplay and like come out and enjoy. She's going to be doing all kinds of cool panels and workshops and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't know a whole lot about cosplay myself. I'm a video game guy and just nerd. Um, but it will be there. We will be talking more about it later on on the ECC page. I'm going to try and get a video up there this week. And we'll do some touching on that and some other stuff and try and get it going. Um, God, I know somebody's going to edit that audio. It'll be weird. I know, Devin, you just joined and it's going to be... Ugh, I regret the words I just said. Um, but yeah, there will be cosplay. There will be all kinds of stuff. So like I said, Emerald Coast Con is happening again. It is benefiting the Ark of the Emerald Coast. All the money's going to them for the great work that they do in the community and uh, towards the location that we're using. And I think it's going to be a good time. So get ready for pub crawls, all kinds of stuff. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, I got some stuff in today at the shop that you guys should be pretty excited for. Um, get ready to play some games you've never played before on a cartridge. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. I've got some things in mind. So keep an eye on the page in the coming weeks for that. Um, if you see my custom Game Boys as well, like the backlit ones, the DMGs, and my horrible attempt at front lighting a GBA, I finally got my stuff in to get some crazy stuff going on some more Game Boys. I'm going to try and have those cranked out periodically over the next two weeks. I've got some GBAs that have SP screens in them that are going to be freaking phenomenal. I test fit one today. And kind of did a quick solder job on it. Should be really cool. Pixley, I'm probably going to need some volunteers. I will let you know for sure. Probably not as many as last year. Um, just to kind of keep everything crazy. And I'm ADD and nuts. So I'll probably be running around doing the volunteering myself. But I will need a few people uh, at the very least for like um, gate checks. And checking of badges and whatnot. Um, yeah, Taj, the original Game Boy, I got the one that's got the pie in it that I'm wrapping up, and then I've got the backlit ones that are done, and I've got a couple more that I'm doing that are going to be biverted, which means that everything that shows up, like, the contrast is going to be flipped, essentially, so everything that's light on the screen is going to be dark, and vice versa, so they're much easier to see when they're backlit. Um, I'm probably going to actually crank one of those out tonight. I brought home... A few things. Uh, I got another soldering station from a buddy of mine that is at the house now, so I can work in both locations. I know I'm like working myself to death, but you know what? It's fun. Whatever. I'll sleep when I'm dead. Um, what else to talk about? Um, I don't know. Cool. I can't wait for you to get back from Vegas, man. Um, Hopefully, it'll be for the Rad Junk one year anniversary. Maybe. Maybe you'll just fly in for that occasion alone. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but yeah, one year at the shop. Like, that's nuts. I uh, I didn't think it would be as crazy as it is. I couldn't done, have done any of it without Sam. Obviously, she's there day in and day out. Taking care of everything and like... Pricing and cleaning and keeping me on track because I, you know, I'm all over the place. Um, I couldn't do it without you guys either. We've got that core group of people that, like, is amazing. And then all the new people that have started coming out. And um, it's it's overwhelming, to be honest. It's I never thought that our little game store would get to the point where it is now where we're overflowing with inventory and customers and we appreciate every single one of you that comes out and um, it just reminds me of the old days when we would all go into Dave and Eric's shop and it was like the wand shop from Harry Potter just floor to ceiling nut so crap and uh, I hope you guys like get the feel that I'm going for where you can walk in and you feel at home and like if you want to dig through some boxes to find some new stuff that we got in feel free, you know, whatever. So 
it's uh it's fun thanks josh i appreciate that i really do um we try really hard and uh we just hope it works um thanks denise i i really thank you thank you um but yeah enough let's see what else we got uh What's something cool? You guys want to see some PC Engine stuff, some Turbo stuff, some Saturn stuff? My game room's kind of stupid right now. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh, hold on, let's see if I can pull something random. What did I get for myself recently? I know that's kind of like. Oh, here's one that Dave and I talked about on a live stream, I think, called Slay. Uh, this is a PS2 game. It's kind of like Giant Robots. Denise, you want to see Turbo stuff? Okay. Never mind. It's decided. Um, we're going to look at Turbo stuff. Let I'm going to stand up real quick and probably trip over a bunch of stuff. Um, Nate, you've seen all my Dreamcast stuff. You saw it all, so it's fine. Um, Pixley, if you had gotten here earlier, you would have seen where I already went over that sweet PC Engine CD-ROM system that you got me, which is sick, and uh, that's going to be in my collection forever. Let's see, what did I get? Oh, now this is going to seem dumb, um, like really dumb, because this is like a basic thing that I feel like every Turbo person gets, and it took me years. I've been collecting Turbo since like... I won't say like actually collecting, but I got my first Turbo Graphics in like '04. I found it at a Goodwill for ten bucks, uh, with the Turbo Booster Plus on the back, and uh, a few games, multi-tap, few controllers. I had no idea what it was. I thought it didn't work, but it does. Um, I finally got this, the Turbo Stick, and it's just joystick controller, and uh, you know. It's cool. I finally got one. Every time I saw one in the wild, I was like, oh, I don't need it. I don't need it. But um, finally picked one up, and it's fun. Hey, yeah, bring it out. Hey, maybe we should finally do that freaking uh, Steel Battalion thing that we talked about where we get like four of them together and set them up and land them. Maybe we'll do that at ECC. That'd be kind of cool. Um, I'm going to go and grab some Turbo stuff real quick. I see a stack of like newer things I got. Let's see if I can get to it without dying. Oh my god, there's like boxes and boxes of stuff in here. This is not a game room anymore. Turbo, I actually picked this up at Momocon. Um, since I'm back on the NES train, I picked up an Action 52. Um, this one is one with the black PCB, uh, which is a little uncommon. I haven't seen that before I saw this one. Um, for those unfamiliar, this is a weird NES cart that has 52 games on it, one of which being Cheetah Men, uh, which was supposed to be like a TV series and action figures and stuff. This thing's weird. Um, too expensive for what it is, but it's an odd one that I needed for my collection. I don't know. I like weird stuff. Put that there. Um, but on the Turbo stuff, uh, so this is the box for that Soldier Blade game I was talking about. It's a shooter. Uh, this one did not come in a hard case, I don't believe. Um, so it was just cardboard and a tray and a manual in the game. And that's kind of cool. Uh, I recently picked up, so these aren't very exciting turbo games that I got, um, but there's some that I didn't have. So, uh, I picked up Galaga 90, which is another little shooter if you're familiar with Galaga. Everybody knows the arcade game. Um, it's kind of hard to see the hue card in the sleeve, but Galaga 90, nothing crazy. Uh, I got Bomberman, which we're actually playing Bomberman 2 at the shop today. 
or yeah, Bomberman 2 on the Super Nintendo. Ton of fun. Uh, great party game. Maybe we'll break that out one night too. Um, picked up Newtopia, which this is another one like I always used to see it. I don't know why I hadn't picked it up until now. So I got that one. Um, picked up Sidearms because I like shooters again. Uh, Double Dungeons. I don't know what this is. Um, like I said, I've been doing Turbo for a while. I've got a pretty good selection in my collection, but I've not seen this one. So we'll add that. Fortunately, they're card only, but eh, whatever. I just want the games. Um, got Dungeon Explorer, which little known fact. Ah, case is opening. Um, this is actually published by Atlas. Either published or developed. I can't remember. Um, so this is an Atlas title for those of you that like Atlas games. Cool little game. Um, finally got that. So, like I said, that's my new Turbo stuff that I've gotten in. Um, I don't think I've picked up anything else recently for the Turbo graphics. Um, I've got a couple PC Engine games I'm eyeing, some shooters. And then once I get through the shooters, I may, um, may grab a couple adventure games or platformers or something like that. Just to keep going. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't think I want to do an entire set. For turbo graphics honestly I'm probably just gonna grab the games I want and the ones that I want to play which is the direction I'm heading in uh, with all of my collection which is why a lot of it's ending up at the shop I'm kind of like I don't know what I want to play anymore so if you guys have any suggestions let me know um, uh, this is another game I'm going to talk about that is on the Genesis that was like a cartoon in a line of toys called Exo Squad when I was a kid and I remember they were like mechs and they came with another little action figure it was the pilot that could sit inside of it and you like flip the lid down and he sits in there and like some of them had like wings and stuff uh, kind of like mech warrior meets Gundam in a sense uh, and this came in in a giant lot of games that we got and this thing looks cool like um, this almost makes me want to get the toys again like I haven't played the game yet but it's neat um, Obviously, a little bit later release, it looks like, on the Genesis, because it's got the cardboard box. Um, yeah, Nate, let's find some of these things, man. Like, I would, I would love this. Oh, weird. Unique two-player cooperative mode lets two players work together to control one ship. I don't know about you guys, but uh, that sounds like a great game. You know, maybe after a couple adult beverages, that could be a lot of fun. Um Y'all gonna live stream this one? Because we could live stream it. Um, I'll get the system going in the next few days. And let's plan for like... Wanna shoot for Tuesday night? We'll probably do Tuesday night and live stream this. Maybe I'll do some like Jenny games. Since uh, it'll be like Joe's first experience with Genesis games. I'll play this. Maybe some Felios. Which is another one I've got at the shop, but I haven't brought it home yet. I should. Um, play some Soul Feast. Um, what else? What else could I play on Genesis? Does anybody have a copy of Shining Force? Apparently I have to play Shining Force. Is that even a good game? Like, I know Dave loves it, and I'm sure Eric loves it too. I haven't played Shining Force, so maybe? Um... Hey, I would love to, man. Like, just let me know. I'll guest star on anybody's live stream. That's another thing. So, I hinted at it a while back. Um, I think on my personal Facebook, which is public anyway, so any of you can read it. Um, probably going to start taking the podcast more serious. Like, I've recorded some stuff, and I just haven't put it out there because I'm like, ugh, it's not what I want. Um, but me and the guys have kind of been talking about getting together and doing a weekly podcast at Rad Junk, and uh, just talking games, and doing some cool stuff. So, if you guys would listen to that, let me know in the comments, or if you have some topic ideas, let me know. Um, I think we're probably going to shoot for this coming week to try and get something going, and probably have it out by mid the following week. So if we do it Sunday, it'll be out by like, let's say Wednesday or Thursday, if I can get the audio done. 
I'm not big on how to do this when it's more than one person talking into a microphone. I don't know. Um, so we'll figure that out. Um, I'm looking like across the way here because I think I see a stack of Genesis games. I'm going to grab them real quick because screw it. I've got nothing better to do. The only thing we're going to do tonight is eat some food and watch Castlevania. Has anybody watched Castlevania yet? Is it good? Mark, if you're watching, I know you've been pushing me to watch it. Um, you're like, I need to check it out. So while I'm grabbing these, if you've seen Castlevania, let me know. Nate, what do you think about it? Oh my God. Oh god. Ugh. I just killed a PS1 case of some way, of some sort. Yeah, Todd, it's the one on Netflix, man. Oh, I know, Denise. I know, I know, I know. I'm so behind. Uh, Pixley, I'll definitely let you know, dude. Um, so basically, what I just grabbed off the shelf is my Genesis collection. Um, you guys are going to laugh because. Other than maybe like two games that might be hiding over there, this is my Genesis collection. Um, oh, cool. Nate, maybe we'll finish it up tonight. Uh, I have to work in the morning, so maybe not, but we'll see. <coughs> so, um, one game that was really weird. I don't think this is a pricey game. Uh, it looks odd. This is called Cosmic Spacehead. I don't know. It uh, <laughs> Cosmic Spacehead sounds pretty funny to me. Um, sounds like a bad, bad 80s movie. Um, it's on a weird shaped cart too. Um, weird. This might be another one we play. So Todd, one of the guys that I'll probably be doing the podcast with, loves Genesis. He is a Sega dude. Like, Sega is his thing. Other than Dave, I don't know anybody who loves Sega as much. Um, so we'll probably talk a lot about that. Um, I just noticed actually that in Cosmic Spacehead, um, some of you know that I'm a photographer. Um, <laughs> he's got an instant camera. So, let's see. Cosmic needs your help. He has no money, no car, no respect from his fellow cosmonauts. The trouble is, no one believed his tale of discovering a faraway planet called Earth. So it's your job to help him get back there and take some handy snaps. Starting from his hometown, Old Leno Town, it's Cosmic's gameplay all the way in a... Cosmic... It's Cosmic gameplay. Sorry. All the way in a unique blend of adventure and arcade action, plus a whole galaxy of surprises thrown in. Absorb your senses in the giant extraterrestrial odyssey of Cosmic Journey. And it, down at the bottom, it says, oh, there's names of characters on the back. I couldn't figure out what the heck that was. Um, <clears throat> okay, Denise, it's funny you bring that up. Because everybody has finally talked me into listening to Ready Player One. Um, my best friend from childhood, the one that I played so much of this with, sent me a text the other day asking me if I had Dungeons of Daggeroth on the TRS-80 because I'm into 8-bit computers. I do not have that game. I figured out what it was. He told me it was related to that book somehow. Um, he's been trying to hunt down a copy of it, and, oh my god, if you have an extra, like, let me know. Um, so, I have built a website that may or may not have a terminal on it that is a TRS-80, a Commodore 64, an Apple II, and, um, I'm probably gonna put an Atari 800 emulator on there, because it's Atari 800. Um... I don't want to tell you guys the name of the website because you're going to laugh your butts off at it uh, until it's done. And um, if you have that game, I, I would love to get my hands on it. Just take a picture and send it to my buddy. Um, but that would be super cool. Um, God, that sounds neat. So far, the... Uh, what? An extra cocoa? No, you don't. Yeah, you need to like... I need to check that out at the shop. Um, I would love to. Um, okay, back to Genesis. Okay, enough with the 8-bit computers. Oh, you're killing me. I wish I had my Commodore here. Um, 
So another Genesis game is uh, that I picked up from my buddy Josh, who's finally back. Josh, you are back. Um, Denise, add me on Facebook, Joe Alonzo. You'll find me. Um, we'll talk about that. Um, one of my good friends, Josh, is finally back in the States, and uh, we're so happy to have him back. He's a big staple of trade night. He has helped the store out more than I can describe in so many ways. Um, dude's amazing. Uh, he picked this game up a while back, and we traded for it. This is called Toxic Crusaders. If you guys are unfamiliar with this, this was a movie, a cartoon, all kinds of stuff. I remember this from when I was a kid. This is a super nice, complete copy. It's got manual, registration card, like a poster. Like, just look at that. It's so cool. Um, and, like, it's got him on the front with his mop. I mean, who doesn't love that? Really cool game. Um, another game that I've talked about before, I believe, is called uh, Growl. This is pretty dang rare on Genesis. Um, hard to come by. This was actually an arcade game. It's a beat em up. You, um, you're like a zookeeper and you have animal companions that you can call in to fight people and like help you. There's one point where like you're fighting some dudes that are in a tank like shooting at you and you call in an elephant and the elephant rams the tank and like their arms fly off and everything. Uh, this game is pretty cool. I actually got a copy of this to my friend Robert who's a really awesome guy. Uh, this is my personal copy and, uh, complete in case. I don't like doing Genesis if it's not complete in case, because, like, they're in these nice hard cases that really look good on a shelf. Um, another game that I picked up at trade night a while back was from my buddy Phil. This is called Beauty and the Beast Bell's Quest. Yeah, I know, it's like a kid's game, but it's Sunsoft? And, uh, there's actually another Beauty and the Beast game on Genesis that I see more often than this one. And, uh, this one kind of reminded me of a game that I like on Super Nintendo, as far as, like, quirky, odd titles um, have to go, and it's a uh, Snow White game, and it almost looks similar to this, so I snagged this one, it's kind of neat, I'm not huge on Disney, um, surprisingly, but like I said, this looks cool, so I wanted to check it out, uh, I know I've talked about this, this is a Victo Kai game that I keep in there just because it's funny, Victo Kai is one of my favorite companies out there as far as video game goes, and uh, this is Sam and King, the big catch. Uh, not like Salmon Run by Bill Williams. If you guys know our obsession with Bill Williams. Uh, this is just a fishing game, but it's Victor Kai. Uh, famous for Golgo 13, uh, Moffat Conspiracy, what else? Cry on Conquest. I know I'm naming NES games now, I'm talking about Genesis. Um, the last one in my Jenny collection that I can see for right now because I might have some more hiding, is uh, Wiz and Liz. I think I've talked about it before. This almost looks like... Um, I don't really know how it plays. I need to check this one out, too. I picked this up at ECC last year from my buddy Sean, and um, it's got some really cool, like, colorful art. Um, it almost looks like Sonic, but you're, like, a wizard, and there's, like... A little girl with you, and uh, it says multiple soundtracks, 360 pixel a second scrolling for super smooth animation, 56 levels. Holy crap. So you search for bunnies. Join Wiz and Liz, those crazy wizards in their fantastic race to rescue their wayward wabbits. Yes, it says wabbits. Um, dash across the screen collecting rabbits, gaining bonus points by scooping up ingredients for spells. You can play with a friend. This one or two player game is a fast, smooth playing, non violent adventure that keeps you going at a furious pace. Chock full of hidden levels, puzzles, and bonus games, Wiz and Liz grabs your attention. Multiple soundtracks, 360, 360 pixel a second scrolling for super smooth animation, 56 levels of colorful graphics make this search for bunnies an exciting whirlwind chase. So I guess this plays like Sonic, but you're looking for rabbits. Um, weird. I'm going to have to throw this in, maybe tonight. Um, I need to play this. That sounds cool. Um, I just saw that Derry popped in. Derry has finally helped me with some arcade games. I say finally, but he helps me all the freaking time. Um, 
The Centipede Machine is back up and running at Rad Junk. That one's good. Um, if you haven't been in the shop in a while, we also have a Soul Calibur Machine and a Tekken Tag Tournament Machine, as well as the Multicade, the Donkey Kong Jr., and the Centipede, all working fantastically. Um, one thing I got in today is a new Neo Geo MVS board. Uh, it's a single slot. However... If you know the story of the two slot that Rich and I went through, um, that was a uh, a downward spiral of depression and agony uh, trying to get that thing working. But I got a one slot MVS board in today because some of you may know this, some of you may not. Um, I have a box of 17 Neo Geo carts that I just was dying to play that I got from our buddy George. And um, I haven't been able to play them. So I finally ordered a single slot board, I hooked it up today, plugged it in the JAMA harness, grounded the board, good to go. Metal Slug 3 played amazingly well, um, but I think what I'm going to do is consoleize the MVS, which that means, so the MVS is the arcade version of the Neo Geo. The home version was the AES, which is incredibly expensive and rare, and the games are thousands and thousands of dollars. I think the cheapest game on the AES is like 125 bucks. And it's not a good game. All the good games were like 600 up. Um, MVS, however, because it's arcade, was much cheaper and much easier to obtain. So, I'm going to take this MVS board and I'm going to build a case for it and then wire it up so it can output to the TV. That way, I don't have to go through buying an AES and whatnot and can just play the cheaper MVS games on my television. So, if that's something you guys would be interested in, something like that, let me know. Um because I wouldn't mind building another one. It's not cheap to do the initial build, but as far as the initial investment, it's not bad, and then the games are way cheaper. I think most MVS carts, like you can find a ton of them for like five, or not 500, I'm sorry, $50 to about $300 for like the upper end. I mean, there are some that are rare and expensive, just like any other video game niche, but um, if you wanna get a Neo Geo, MVS is the way to go. And super cool. So I'll probably post some progress pics of that. For right now, I'm just enjoying it hooked up to the JAMA harness and throwing different carts in there. We've got a lot of King of Fighters and Real Bout, Metal Slug. Um, I think I've got Baseball Stars. Just a lot of cool stuff. Uh, and if you haven't seen a Neo Geo cart, they're these big, massive, like, so imagine something like an NES cart, but like two of them wide and like one and a half tall and like four thick. Like, it's a massive two-board cart that plugs into this board, and it's this crazy contraption. But once you get it going, those arcade games are awesome. And if you grew up in the 90s like I did, you know, being a, born in the 80s, you remember these weird red arcade cabinets that have more than one game in them. And those were the Neo Geo cabs because they had multiple games that you could select from. And they were those physical cartridges. Some of those boards were like six-slot boards. So you could have six games at once and then you check them out. So um, that's something cool we got in today. And like I said, I got something else in today. I don't want to say what it is exactly, but just be prepared to play some cartridge games you haven't played before, like uh, Star Fox 2. Who wants to play Star Fox 2? I know they just announced it with the SNES Classic. Um, it's coming out soon. But uh, who wants to play that on like their original Super Nintendo? Because I know I want to. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, trying to think. What else? If you guys get a chance, if you haven't been in the shop in a while, go by and like, there's some crazy stuff in there. We've got some more display cases now. So we've got the main one, if you guys remember, that was overflowing. Um, we've expanded it out one more wide and then we've got one on the L. If you're into weird stuff, check out the case on the end. Because there's like Jaguar, Jaguar CD, um, there's Dreamcast, 32X. Just some cool stuff in there. And um, that's my favorite case out of all of it. I know like a lot of you are into Mario and whatnot, but for those of you that are into like weird stuff, like, you know, that normal people wouldn't play because we're all a little crazy, check out that case. Um, but yeah, come by and see us. Stay tuned for more info on Emerald Coast Con. Oh, Josh, you're right. Um... So, a while back, we got in a copy of Jack Brothers on the Virtual Boy, which is the rarest Virtual Boy game, the hardest to acquire as far as the American set goes. I think there may be one more in Japan. Um, 
but I can't remember what it is. Maybe a Gundam game. Um, so, if you see the picture that we posted yesterday, we got the entire North American set of Virtual Boy games along with the Virtual Boy in the shop. Did a little photo op with it. Um, immediately our friend picked up Jack Bros and Tetris and a couple other things, which is cool. But uh, yeah, all 14 games from the American set. How cool is that? Like to have every game created for a console and the console sitting there. Like I know a lot of people complain about it giving them headaches. Um, I haven't experienced that myself. And I put a lot of gameplay time into Jack Bros the other day, which is also an Atlas game. Uh, really cool game if you haven't seen that. But yeah, complete North American Virtual Boy set? Craziness. Um, Taj, so the SNES Classic, um, my opinion of that thing, I bought the NES Classic. I really like it for what it is. Um, as an NES collector, there were a lot of games left out of it that you know I consider stable games. But considering the games I played when I was growing up, because we didn't have a lot of money... And we were buying games secondhand, but, you know, the system was still, you know, alive and kicking. Um, I grew up with games like Captain Skyhawk. I think we had a couple Mega Mans at one point. Stuff like that. And they were all fun. Um, and the games on the NES Classic were good. I think that selection was good. The SNES Classic collection of games, like, is incredible. So, I'm not a huge RPG fan. But just the fact that they included all of those RPG games on the SNES Classic makes me want to get it so I can sit down and play them and, like, have save states, whatnot. I know RPG games already have saves, but, like, I don't have a lot of time. And I feel like that would be a good way for me to play those games that you guys always tell me about that you love, like Final Fantasy III or Secret of Mana. I think Secret of Mana is on there. Um, and things like that that just, like... I want to play those games because all of you guys love them so much and I don't ever get a chance to. And um, so I definitely plan on getting one. Plus, being the Star Fox fan that I am, Star Fox 2? Holy crap, like, that's nuts. For you, those of you that don't know, like, that game was finished. They showed it off at CES and, like, it just never came out. And then later on, they kind of, like, let the creators redeem themselves by doing, like, the Star Fox game on DS. I think it was... Assault? Whatever the one on DS was, um, they said it drew a lot of things from Star Fox 2. However, like to get that thing in my hands, I will be uh, super excited. Dude, I know. Like, uh, like The lineup on that console was so good already with like Final Fantasy 3, Super Mario RPG, Mario RPG, like the Mario Worlds, um, Street Fighter Turbo, uh, like, I don't have the list in front of me, so I'm, like, spitballing. But Star Fox 2 is definitely the nail in the coffin of my wallet. Um, Taj, I don't know. I heard it had something to do, and I don't know how accurate this is, um, with the fact that the N64 was coming out, so they wanted to kind of switch focus and work on the Ultra 64, which is what it was codenamed at the time, and do games for that instead of, you know whatever. I don't know why they didn't release it, which is, it's just dumb. Um, but yeah, like, that's super cool. Um, one thing I'm jealous of is in the Japanese version, version of the Super Nintendo Classic, um, apparently they're getting Mystical Ninja, which, oh, it makes me so mad. Like, Goemon? Like, come on! Like, why does Japan get Goey and we don't? We had those, like, we had Mystical Ninja on SNES, we had Ninja Boy 1 and 2 on Game Boy, oh, which, Nate, you recently picked up one of those for me, which, oh, I'm glad that went to you. Um, and then we had Great Adventure and Mystical Ninja on um, N64. So, like, why didn't we get that in our SNES Classic? You know how that would have, like, revitalized the Goemon property? Can you imagine if they put a Goemon game on the Switch? I'd buy it day one. I don't know about you guys, Nate, I know you would, um, I know my buddy Dave would, Josh, if you're watching, um, I know you would, <sighs> super jealous, so we'll see what happens, um, yeah, I mean, 
I'll definitely be getting the SNES Classic. Plus, you get two controllers. The only disappointing thing about the SNES Classic that I did not know until the other day. So, in the pictures of it, on the front, on the controller ports, it looked like regular SNES controller ports, which I don't know why I thought those were legit. Because um, I was really excited to hook in my 8-bit do controllers, which are Bluetooth SNES controllers, and they saw an adapter that plugs into an SNES port, which I thought would be super cool to use on that. So I'd have wireless controllers that, you know, were themed like the Super Nintendo. However, Nintendo has fooled us all because that little controller port flips down and it's a door to hook in the controllers like you do on the NES Classic, which are the kind that plug into like the bottom of a Wiimote, which is fine. However, I shed a little tear. So it is what it is. Um... But yeah, I, Taj, I think it's cool, man. Uh, if I can get one, hopefully they produce more than they did with the NES Classic. Because it was a pain getting those. Uh, I got two. I got one for myself and one for my brother in South Florida. So it was tough. Um, we'll see. Yeah, Josh, that's true. But like, yeah. Um, oh, whatever. Sega's just not as good. Sega is meh. That's why my Genesis collection is only like six games deep. Um, there's just not enough there. But, uh, kidding, I'm kidding. Um, maybe you guys will draw me to the Sega side. But Turbo Graphics and Nintendo for life. Um, what else? What else can we talk about? Oh, I'm not into card games. But while we were at Momocon, like, I picked up a Street Fighter deck building game. Which looks pretty cool. I don't know why. It is what it is. Josh, Atari box. Um, so, Atari kind of announced that they're doing a new system. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Not a big Atari guy outside of the Atari computers. The 400, the 800, and the 800XL. Um, meh. We'll see what happens. So, I don't... What are they going to do? Are they going to release new games or old games? They already released the flashbacks with the old games. If they do new games, what new games are they going to do? I mean... It's just, Atari, take your ball and go home. Like... Make some more stuff that you sell at Dollar General. Yeah, I know, I'm kind of bashing Atari and like... It's the grandfather of the video games, but... What what really matters before the NES other than the Vectrex? I don't know. As far as consoles go. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Maybe they'll put out something cool. Um, I do like that they're doing like teasers and stuff. It's fun to see them back. So, um, a Steam system? That's what Steam Link's for. I mean, there's already a handle on that. Which, <clears throat> Steam Link's cool. It's a little box can stream from your PC, your Steam games. Uh, I use them in the rooms of our house because you can do a remote desktop and I like to control my computer from, you know, the game room or whatever, which is cool. <clears throat> but we'll see what happens. Um, what else? Guys, I think I'm out of games within my immediate reach to uh, talk about. <laughs> um, there's literally stuff all over my game room. I'd pan the camera around, but... Yeah, it's kind of kind of messy. I did notice the other day, as someone who collects NES and Turbo Graphics, I've got a heck of a lot of SNES games, and I don't know why. Um, almost too many. Maybe I'll start giving them away. Maybe we'll do some like raffle or uh, I don't know, just a contest for some Super Nintendo games or some PS2. Got some solid PS2 or some Dreamcast or. Maybe a Turbo Graphics? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> be on the lookout for that, though, because I've been thinking about it. Um, <laughs> Denise, I've got a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure something out. But like I said, uh, I'm going to wrap this up because I'm kind of hungry and I want to watch Castlevania and I want to solder on some Game Boys and I want to play some games and then I'm probably not going to go to bed and then I'm going to go to work. Um, but yeah, so, just to recap, 
<laughs> shut up, Derry. I got some cool stuff, man. Um, so, Emerald Coast Con. Go to the Emerald Coast Con page. Go check it out. Go like the page. Go share it with your friends. Give us suggestions on stuff that we need to do at Emerald Coast Con. Um, because I'm looking for more. We've got a whole thing like planned out, but I'm looking to squeeze more in. Uh, so we can just make that con as fun as possible. Like, I don't want you guys to have to, like, adhere to the schedule and, like, all this, like, proper stuff. Let's just have some fun. Let's play some games. Let's, like, talk to some cool artists. Emerald Coast Con is going to be, like, our convention. Not just, like, mine or whoever's. Let's make it our convention where we help out this great thing, like, the ARC. And donate some money to them so they can like keep doing the great things that they do in the community and just have a cool time. Um, outside of that, one year anniversary coming up the next trade night, which I believe will be roughly August 6th or 7th. It will be the first Saturday in August. Um, the weekend before that, I will be flying to a race. I can't remember where. Um, my schedule's nuts. Um, so yeah, trade night, one year anniversary at Rad Junk. Um, you might start seeing some like throwback posts to when we were like painting the ugly walls in the store, even though I didn't want to paint them and Sam did, or when we were like split second trying to build shelves the night before, and uh, Rich came and saved our butts the same day uh, when we were in panic mode. Um, yeah, it's been a crazy year, guys, um, and we're looking to keep it up and get bigger and expand and do some fun stuff. So we hope you guys are all there for that. And uh, go like the page, even if you're not like wanting to buy video games. It's fun to just see what we're doing. Um, and I'll start doing more of these videos again. I know I kind of like dropped off. i just been super busy and super tired because I don't really sleep a lot. Um, so Emerald Coast Con, Trade Night at Rad Junk, the only place where you can sell, trade, and buy games with others in our store. Um, Taj, anniversary is probably going to be August 7th. I think officially it's August 1st is the official date that we opened. Um, thanks, Nate. You and Kenna, you guys have been great uh, since the beginning, literally since the beginning. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to try and recap again. ECC, trade night, anniversary, come see us, podcast coming soon, stream hopefully on Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, I'll stream some games, even if it's just me, um, we've got another video game series with Sam and our friends, Chandler, thank you so much, uh, you and Megan came in today, grabbed some games, I love the fact that your kids are playing games, and that Megan still has all of her old stuff. Because that's super cool to me. Um, there's a whole lot coming from Rad Junk, guys. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. I've got some secrets and some cool stuff up my sleeve. Trade night twice in a month, Derry, would kill me. Okay, I don't know if you guys have seen me on trade night normally. But I, like, can't breathe. Um, Todd, you better be there, dude. We're going to play some games. Um, I would die if we did trade night twice a month, though. I know Sam would just freak out and leave. Um, but yeah, I've got some cool stuff coming. I promise. I'll talk to you guys later. If I can close the video.